We got this email this morning. Dear John and Ken. That doesn't even say dear. More than three years ago, an Orange County jury acquitted two police officers of murder slash manslaughter in the death of Kelly Thomas. I was the jury foreman. Most of the media chaos ended a few weeks after the trial, but death threats are still made. Via social media, pictures of the individual jurors are still blasted online. And hackers have threatened to release my personal information, including the names and addresses of my family members. The threats have increased since the AUSA recently declined to file federal charges. Your reporting during the trial was irresponsible and helped create the perception that the jurors were incompetent or that the trial was rigged. Neither perception helped the community heal or move forward. In any case, we, the jury, got it absolutely right. And I think the public needs to finally hear that. My explanations will not satisfy everyone, but at least the public will better understand our process and the outcome. If you have some airtime to dedicate to this, let me know. So Kelly Thomas was that uh, homeless, mentally ill man, I believe he was in his 30s, that uh, the police beat up in the video. It was 33 minutes long. July 5th, 2011 is when it happened. He died and days later. It was a, and I watched the whole video, watched it a couple of times, and the video was was vicious, relentless, unwarranted, just one of the cruelest things I've ever seen. I will never forget hearing Kelly Thomas call f- for his dad to try to help him. And uh, it, it just, it, it makes you, it made me cry just watching it. It's just, just terrible, terrible. The cops in question were Manuel Ramos. And Jay Cicinelli. And uh, when the jury returned a not guilty verdict, it, uh, in my mind, is one of the uh, all-time worst, most indefensible verdicts right up there with the O.J. trial, right up there with the Rodney King trial. Just uh, just insane to me. Um, but uh, nobody wanted to come on the air and talk about it back then. Roy does now. Uh, fake name. Uh, he was the foreman of the Kelly Thomas jury, so we're going to give him his uh, time here. Roy, thanks for coming on. Um, tell us how you possibly, you and the jury, got to the decision to uh, to acquit the two cops. Uh, sure. So, first of all, I just want to say I absolutely agree with you. My first viewing of the video it was obviously well before the, the trial. Um, I was sitting at home, and someone posted it on Facebook, and I watched the whole thing, and I had tears in my eyes, too. I felt the exact same way you did. And it wasn't until, you know, we watched it again and again, went through the details of it, um, listen to um, the experts and, and, and really watch step by step how the incident occurred, where he realized it was just uh, a tragic course of events that, that just went off the rails and, and unfortunately ended in the tragic death of, of Kelly Thomas. But uh, to suggest that it was, it was murder um, uh, or, or, or manslaughter, they had any intent to, to kill him is just, is just crazy, in my opinion. Um, I certainly think the murder charge was. Uh, unwarranted. Um, I, I can understand the involuntary manslaughter charge and the excessive force charge, um, but at the end of the day, we just—it really wasn't even close when we got back into the, the jury room. Uh, there was just no evidence to suggest that that this was a criminal act. Um, you, you, you guys keep saying it was a 30-minute beating. It, it, it wasn't, and that's that's why I say it was irresponsible. Uh, the actual scuffle was about three or four minutes. Um, only about two minutes. Uh, it, was where uh, any officers were on top of, of Kelly Thomas. For the most part, he was on his side, um, you know, trying to resist or trying to get away, and they were trying to, to, to restrain him. Um, uh, so only about two minutes, uh, and then the Cicinelli uh, uh, smashes to, or, hit, or taser hits to the face. Those are the only beating parts or, or parts where they were using uh, a force on him. And, and look, I, I totally believe that's probably what caused his death, but um, to say that that was murder or manslaughter uh, when they were simply trying to restrain him after uh, that struggle. I just, I, n- nobody, could get, nobody could get there. I absolutely cannot understand anything you just said. If you s- beat and smash his face as hard as they did and it results in his death, if, if I did that to you, I would have murdered you. If you did that to me, you would have murdered me. I, I, I saw it with my own eyes what they did. I simply can't understand what you people are talking about. I, I really don't so, know what so to we, say. Uh, well, so what you're talking about is his facial injuries, which, which not even the medical examiner said that's what causes death. 
They said it was chest compressions. Mm-hmm. So I, I agree that the, the facial, uh, the, the strikes of the face from, from the taser were, were I, very aggressive. Uh, he had, unwarranted. Uh, his That's his head, I saw the hospital pictures. His head, his face was extremely swollen. He suffered severe he was, head injuries. He he, yeah, but if, they crushed him. That's if, what killed if, him. If Remember they, that? If they want to say that it's the crushing of the chest, doesn't make a difference to me. The police did that to him willfully and unnecessarily. And um, it we've, we, we doesn't really matter whether it was the beating of the face, the head, or the crushing of the chest. The cops so, did that uh, to him, and the result was his death. I, I, An important point here, I think, is is when when the actual facial strikes occurred, uh, it was it was the very end when Cicinelli arrived. He he had been called there uh, uh, multiple times. Multiple officers were called because they couldn't they could not restrain him. There were no strikes to the face until the end, uh, when finally Cicinelli apparently felt he had no other options. They were exhausted. They they could not get him into handcuffs. They had tased him multiple times. He was still resisting. They still could not cuff him. They, and apparently Cincinnati felt the only thing he could do was to was to punch him in the face. And he had a taser in his hand, which which caused a majority of the damage. He was but screaming the damage, the- for mercy. He was screaming for mercy. At that point, he was alive, and they wouldn't stop. He had absolutely no weapons on him. I well, and, and the police and the police started the well, physical confrontation. I think, Roy, you're forgetting the big picture. They were called here because a homeless schizophrenic guy might have been breaking into cars. They treated him like he was some sort of murderer. It's crazy. No, so that's that's not true either. They, 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 of course when it's they true. first approached him, they were being they, they were not being aggressive. They asked asked him for his name. He wouldn't yeah. give it to him. I'm going to bleep you up with these fists. I'm going to f you up. That's not aggressive. Well, well hang on. That, that's 15 minutes into the in, into the encounter. So you you got to keep skipping around. I, I, up, I, I'm sorry. Like Ken's murderer. right. The p- police officer announced... These guys were he, mentally ill. They it, didn't know what they were doing. It was premeditated. And they I'm, wanted to beat him. You know that. Do you think that was their I, first I, beating? You think... You really that, think they were calm police officers who got to the scene and were not fed up with this guy. They were fed up with him. Sure. They, they might have been annoyed and frustrated. They get called on, on homeless people all the time. But when they first approached him, they were not looking to, to, to get into an altercation. They killed it, him. It, they killed him. What part of that did you and the other 11 vegetables... Didn't understand. They killed him willfully, brutally, over a long period of time, unnecessarily. He was a mentally ill man screaming for his dad. And they went on beating him, and they went on crushing him, and they killed him. And you decided they were not guilty, and now you want a fair hearing? Now you want people to stop reminding you of it? Seriously? do you really ima- can people. you imagine the pain that his dad, Ron Thomas, has gone through all these years because of what you and the rest of the jury did? And you send us an email as if you're the victim because people keep I, I, reminding you of it on social media? You know well, what? what do you I, think I, people first, are going to do? First of all, no one reminds me of it on social media. No one contacts me directly. Uh, I, I occasionally search for what people are talking about about the case and see if there's any direct threats, and there have been. But there are 11 other people on that jury too. It's not just me. And frankly, I, I couldn't care less well, if people want to. You talk had about this. you but all had some weird groupthink spasm where you went out of your way to find excuses to let these two cops off. They were brutal, vicious monsters. Worst I've, I mean. It's the, it's the worst thing I've ever seen. It's up there with the Rodney King beating. And that was a colossal mistake. Hey, what, you're, right, you're right about Rodney King. This was not even close. The, 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 oh, the, oh. Uh, both of them many, are the many, same. Repeated beatings after many, the guy is clearly down. Repeated beatings after true. the guy's begging for mercy. Wait, 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 what, 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 were you guys on drugs inside that jury room? Were you hallucinating? This is why I say you guys are reporting this irresponsibly. And I don't care. Show, I, I don't I, care I, I what you think. Time, you you guys, can you think I'm responsible wrong. to the day I die. I don't care about your opinion. You guys let off two murderers. Irresponsible doesn't even begin to describe what you guys did. Well, you frankly don't understand the definition of murder, but but besides yeah, that, that's the, it. The bo- I don't understand the definition of murder. A whole bunch of cops squeezing the life out of a guy, literally, and then beating his face to a bloody pulp. They were trying to. I to, saw to the put tape. I saw the photos. I don't understand what murder means. You're nuts. The other 11 people you were with were nuts. Just nuts.
There's no rational way to explain out of this. None. Zero. No other side of the story. No gray area. I saw what I saw, and I saw the result, and I saw the pain Ron Thomas went through, and I really don't care about any problems you and the other 11 have had since. Don't care. One of the most disgusting jury verdicts I've ever seen in my life. Unbelievably disgusting. And I, I don't even want to waste any more time on the show with you. Get out. I'm not sure he was there anymore. I had a feeling that was coming, that he was going to say, well, you didn't see what we saw, and you have a misinterpretation of the encounter. Oh, Good Lord, we studied this case backwards and forwards. We all watched the video. We all followed all the details of it. And when you have the Orange County District Attorney, Tony Rakakis, he would never file charges against cops. It just wasn't in his makeup or in his DNA. And remember the day he announced the charges against these officers, just how convincing he was in making his case about the encounter and what apparently they intended to do? These guys were out of their minds that day. This is one of the few times... You listen to the Johnny Kent show and all this stuff over the years about the Black Lives Matter people and how they sometimes don't really understand what happens when a cop encounters a situation with sort of unknown variables. But Kelly Thomas was known to Fullerton police. He'd been wandering that area for years. And somebody at the bar that day decided to call and report him for maybe breaking into cars. And they come there and it's like, oh, this guy again. I can just imagine that's what this guy again. And, oh, look, he's really having a spell today. Well, I'm not putting up with this. And some cops... Yeah, they may have been calm at the beginning. But in the end, that they crushed him to death. Some You're cops... You're right. Everybody saw the pictures of Kelly Thomas's face, but they were just sitting on him. Some of the cops are sadistic. And they enjoy beating other people. And they lose control. They enjoy it. That's why they got into the business. Some of them are one step over the line. And they easily could have been uh, bad guys beating people up and stealing and committing felonies. But, man, to get a gun and a badge and have that kind of violence inside of you, that kind of hatred inside of you. And you think about You get a few too. cops like that, and once in a while, they pop. And that's what happened with those two. Yep. Uh, let's talk to Ron Thomas, who knew we were going to do this interview and did want to chime in, so we got a few minutes to put him on and talk to him about his reaction to the foreman of the jury calling himself Roy. Ron. Yes, how are you doing? Well, you heard it. Yeah, yeah. What, what did you want to ask him? <laughs> Lots of stuff. Um, but I'm really emotional right now, man. You have not had an opportunity to ever interact with these jurors? No, no. Uh, it's the first time you ever heard any of them speak or say anything. Yeah, then it was all BS. It all is. It, it was. It was. But, you know, I wrote down some notes of what he was saying. Um, he says that, uh, you know, he's seen the video many times and really analyzed this, all this other stuff. But I was there during jury selection, and every one of the jurors, including this foreman, stated clearly they hadn't heard about it. Or maybe they heard about it but didn't pay any attention to it at all. And now today he says that he, he went into full detail of analyzing it. So he's a liar right from there. Before the trial started, he watched the video. That's what he said. That's yeah, what he and said, in, yeah. In jury selection, he says, nope, don't know anything about it. Oh, you remember him specifically? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess you would get a pretty good track of the jurors. Yeah, yeah. And then this, this crap about no strikes until Cincinnati went at him. What about those great big elbows that Wolf landed in him? And I know we're talking about Cincinnati and Ramos here uh, right now, but Wolf smashed Kelly's face horribly with huge elbow strikes. And, and he didn't see that. And he's a jury foreman, you know, and then he says, well, what was Cincinnati supposed to do? And I've said that so many times, why didn't he just say, have you had enough? Because Kelly already told her almost just take me to jail. And Kelly would have just cried and said, please stop it. Yes, I've had enough. And he could have went to jail. If that's what they wanted to do. And this idiot, what was he supposed to do? Well, I hope, you know, I, I don't know. I, I just hope, and, and I'm not saying anything bad about officers in the Midwest for sure, 
But I just hope this guy takes a cross-country trip, gets stopped by a state trooper somewhere, and says the wrong thing. You know? I really do. Well, your son obviously had you know mental conditions, too, which have to play in. I mean, I repeat this. They knew him. Yes. And, and now this Roy, as he called himself, was claiming that uh, they, they just couldn't cuff your son. And that's why they had to do what they did. It was too hard to cuff him. Especially when, I, you know, I agree. And I hope he's listening. I agree because Kelly put his hands and wrists straight out and said, take me to jail. And Rommel still couldn't cuff him. Yeah, right. Kelly knew he was in trouble. He knew that he was going to get beat to death or at least severely. Ramos already told him that, as we all know. And then it was it, it started to unfold. He, that's why he wanted to go to jail. What was what were they supposed to do? And how come this idiot and the rest of them couldn't at least find them guilty of excessive force? Because Kelly never once struck any of them. He just tried to run for his life after being told he was going to get effed up by them. And then they started to. You, you know, uh, just that's excessive force. We all know that. We realize that. This guy's an idiot. And... I think you guys will remember this jury foreman is also and was at the time a defense attorney. No, I didn't know that. And I wouldn't doubt it if John Barnett made him a deal. And I'd like to know if this guy's ever gotten any work from John Barnett since the trial. Yeah, we don't know much about him. He just reached out to us out of nowhere today after three years. We're like, wow, look at this. This guy wants to come on the air. Well, if he's. Yeah. You okay? know, if he's still on the air, yeah, it's it's tough. Uh, oh. If he's listening, I still live in Cyprus. Come visit. Yeah, I'm sorry we had to dig all these terrible feelings up again, but he wanted to come on, and we really wanted to hear what one of these jurors sounded like. I like what John said at the beginning. You're coming on like you're a victim. If, I mean, right. I read the email, Ron. You heard me, and it's sort of like, yeah. you know, I'm the victim here. You guys misrepresented, and we're getting threats, and... Yeah, and Ron Thomas doesn't have a son anymore. Thanks. Yeah, Who's exactly. And, and I live every day knowing that Jay Cincinnati works as a United States postal carrier in Huntington Beach, only about five miles from my house. I drive down the very streets that he, he walks on. Oh, of course, you know, the Postal Service would have ended up. Huh? Yeah, because they have such high standards at the Postal Service. I was wondering well, what was going to happen. How does a guy them? like that even get a federal job right away? You know, I mean, they all know somebody. But, uh, no, the emotions are running high, especially after the feds now give me this, you know, Dear John letter. Well, you know, gee, we're really sorry, but we're not going to charge them. Yeah, Ron is talking about how federal prosecutors did not pursue a civil rights case against oh, the three cops. Yeah. You that know, just came out last week. You know, if there was a racial element to this case, mm-hmm. I wonder yeah, if Yeah, it could be a decision, different you know? situation. Uh, that's a good point. Well, Ron, again, our sympathies. We're sorry that we, I mean, we realize now we put you through that, and we're sorry about that, but um, thanks for coming on again. Yeah, no, I, I go through it every day still. I know, I know. I just, I, we just, I think it was important that the public hear what kind of people get on juries and, and why, why there are so many terrible, terrible verdicts because these no, people are just uh, incapable of the responsibility they have. All right, Ron, we'll talk with you later. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, and we certainly have no proof or knowledge of what Ron mentioned in there about connections between no. the jury foreman and uh, perhaps uh, one of the defense attorneys for the uh, police officers. But, I, again, let's not forget the big picture. I mean, we haven't talked about this case in a long time. We're only talking about it today because the foreman reached out to come on the show. They're called for a possible car break-in guy, and they get there, and it's just Kelly Thomas again. How does that escalate into killing him? That's why I could never wrap my mind around. If he was some stranger that they didn't know had a weapon or not, or they got a call that there's an armed man that might be taking hostages or just shot somebody. Holy, believe me, I believe. I've because they're been vicious. a cop, but I think the reasons you're called to a place dictates your actions. No, no, they're, and they're vicious psychos, though. About car break-ins at the train station there, and they kill him. That's what I can't believe. But vicious psychotics, they look for a target. They want to do this. They have a compulsion. Like you have guys who have a compulsion to rape, a compulsion to molest children. These cops have a compulsion to beat people up. And they need a they need a target. They need an unsympathetic target. 
that nobody's going to fight for, that nobody's going to miss. In their minds, Kelly Thomas was disposable. Just a crazy vagrant who's always been causing yeah, the nuisances co- they've been called in the neighborhood. about him before. Yeah, no, they wanted to. They wanted to do that to him. They wanted to. They've done it to other people. It's like, it, it's just like, you know, you hear uh, often. We've got, you know, there's been plenty of discussion about what cops sometimes do to, to young black men in neighborhoods. They pull you over. They rough you up just to do it. That goes on. This was an example. They do it because they have a compulsion to beat people up. It's like the violent guy who comes home drunk and beats up his wife. That's what they are. They're evil. They they can't help themselves. Then they laugh about it later. They have a beer. They brag about the punches they got in, the techniques they used. They That's were how never, they entertain themselves. And they were never in any danger. They're gang members. They were never in any danger. Of course. You think they'd pick on somebody who could really hurt them? No. Can, can you can pick on a weaker target than, uh, than uh, an emaciated schizophrenic vagrant? Jesus. Again, the cause of death was uh, asphyxia due to chest compression and then the injuries to the head and chest. And they crushed him. Yeah, and, and they and, did. And Ron brought this up. They forgot. There's, there were three officers. Joe Wolf was the third guy in. There were charges against him which were oh, dropped they, after these two were they, found not they guilty. They all should have been charged. They all should have been charged. None of them tried to stop it. None of them did anything. Kelly Thomas, not that big a guy. Um, the situation yeah. was under control. It's like, but yeah, oh, he's resisting. Let's just crush him to death and beat his face with a baton and why, a taser. Why, why do the bully kids beat up the weak kid on a school playground? Because they can. That's all. Just go back to fifth grade. Ten-year-olds. Why, why, why did, why did the, the burly, fat, bully kids beat up the weak, skinny kid? Because he was there. Because it felt good. So they could laugh and brag about it that night on the way home. Nothing else to it. They're animals. Animals, savages, barbarians. That's what they do. Well... Took three years to get somebody on from the Kelly Thomas jury, and there it is for you. We got yeah, more coming. That up. guy was a genius, huh? Yeah, they shouldn't have intelligence tests for juries, should they? John and Ken show. Deborah Mark has the news.